telling you about my independent research on reconstructing an ancient pond ecosystem using microfossils from the early Miocene of Uganda. Here we are in the Primate Paleobiology Lab at the Department of Anthropology and Archaeology, where I'm a research assistant. Currently, we are investigating fossils from sites in Eastern Africa in an attempt to reconstruct the paleo environment of the early Miocene. My research specifically looks at material from Bukwa, Uganda. The Bukwa site is located on the northeastern side of Mount Elgin, an extinct volcano near the Kenya-Ugandan border. Previously, ape fossils have been found at Bukwa, making it an area of interest for paleoanthropologists. As the early Miocene was a time of diversification for African primates, this site is not only important for primate evolution, but it can also provide insights into our own evolutionary history. With this research, I will attempt to recreate the environment from this site 19 million years ago. I hypothesize that this investigation's results will support the dominant hypothesis that this area was a freshwater pond ecosystem surrounded by forested terrestrial vegetation. My study will focus on the aquatic microfossils, which are largely fish and crabs. Most of the fossils used in this research are only around one millimeter large. Despite their small size, these tiny creatures can tell us a lot about their habitat. Due to their geographically small home ranges, small organisms seem to be adapted to their specific environment, most often their immediate surroundings. In this research, habitat reconstruction is possible based on the types of fossilized material that are found. Also, the size of the organisms tell us a lot about their ecosystem. This information about who was here at Bukwa and how big they were indicate other information about their habitat based on what we know about their diet, life cycle, etc. Previous student volunteers like myself participated in sorting a large part of the sediments used in this study. The fossils are sorted from the surrounding matrix using a microscope and precision tools, a process that takes many hours and extreme attention to detail. Here's a shot of something you might see at this stage of research. Pause this video to see if you can find the fossils. Did you spot them? Next, sorted materials are compiled and divided based on morphology. Now we need to figure out what we have here in our assemblage. A large amount of the fossils that I found are fragments of tiny bones. However, we do have a fair amount of complete bones and teeth that can be identified. I can use comparative collections of modern specimens that we have here at the university to do this. At this point, I need to consult the literature to interpret the assemblage of fossil material that I've identified. Comparing what I've found to other early Miocene sites from the area will be helpful. Results to date suggest that microfossil remains are abundant, but mostly aquatic. The assemblage includes many fish teeth, crab limbs, and small reptile remains. The exceptional preservation of the fish teeth provides information about the different kinds of fish we have here at the site. When comparing these teeth to previous literature from Buqua, I have determined that many of these teeth belong to the Alestidae family. Numerous vertebrae and fish fin spines further indicate the presence of cichlid fishes. These vertebrae from my research appear to be the same as those identified in previous studies of Buqua attributed to cichlids based on their shape and texture. Additionally, my research identified numerous fin spines identified as cichlid in previous studies. Now I can start painting a picture of what Buqua may have been like in the early Miocene. Let's consider the fauna from this site. Overall, they indicate that these sediments were once a body of water. We can further specify that the body of water was small and shallow due to the bones' minuscule size. There's no evidence of larger adult versions of the aquatic tax in the assemblage. In other words, we only have very small and are young organisms here. This lack of adult organisms has been interpreted as a shallow body of water where adults have spawned and gone and juveniles are able to develop. Previous literature indicates that this pond was surrounded by a wooded area based on other plant and animal fossils from the site. Recent research exploring the reconstruction of the vegetation from Bukwa and similar sites show the area as a shrubland or wooded grassland area. The results of my study thus far point to the dominant hypothesis that Bukwa was a seasonal pond ecosystem with surrounding forest terrestrial vegetation. This contradicts the popular thought that this part of Africa at the time was your traditional tropical forest. This is very important to keep in mind as we learn more about our fossil ape ancestors and the environments that they lived and adapted in. We need to know more about what was going on in this shallow pond at the base of an active volcano and how did this habitat shape our ancestors. Going forward, more sampling must be done at Bukwa at Mount Elgin to paint an even more detailed picture of ape habitat at the time.